these years, what we feared has finally happened. Unfortunately, darling, it has. How? How did Tatucci find out? More important, does that mean that others know too? Well, Tutucci is a sensible man. Criminal, but sensible. If I keep my end of the bargain, I'm certain he'll keep our secret. Don't worry, darling. If I don't worry, who will? thousand human beings. No, no, I'm innocent. I only obeyed orders. I have a clear conscience. 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 Father. What dear kindness, Orkin. Just another nightmare, my darling. I'm all right. 
Excuse me, sir. Yes. Can some call for you from Mr. Tatuji. Yes. One moment, please. Good news, my friend. What? The best of news. We leave tonight. Have you the sample ready? One hour. Where do we meet? Through our mutual friend. One hour. Well, here we are. We can leave as soon as the good doctor arrives. And as soon as I'm paid. You disapprove of me, comrade? But it's unimportant, so long as you're useful to us. When will you be back? Two days. If there are any problems, the money is in the safe, with the airline tickets and the passport. There must be some other way. Du kannst dich auf mich verlassen. If there is any trouble, you know what to do. Masha, please. Hello. One moment, please. Gallagher here. The doctor will be ready in 45 minutes. Oh, and so am I, my love. We have got 45 minutes, and there's a lot of room in here for you. <laughs> 40 minutes. What if I shot your chin and kept the diamond? You would be dead in 24 hours, and the Central Committee would find another greedy man. Ah, but I'm intelligently greedy. That's why I'm so reliable. Is the doctor reliable? Doctor is insane. Deadlier than the nerve gas that he manufactures. Mad with fear. Terrified of betrayal. But if anything should go awry in our little venture, the doctor at the range a ransom for himself. Kessler's a war criminal, mass murderer. What price could buy his freedom? Four million lives.
A little prayer? It's peaceful here. Not peaceful anywhere. Not for as long as it takes somebody to get something and somebody else to want it. The Taoists say that peace is a promise of death. There was a religious riot here last week. A man and a small child were butchered here. And the Buddha smiles. Really? Well, maybe he knew something, like getting late. Where to, my dear? Out along Imperial Way. I'll direct you. How about a little drink afterwards? Is that, that what you want of me? No. It's always a good place to start. I'll consider it, Mr. Gallagher. Yeah. darling girl? Yes. No. on time, Doctor, as always. Well, here we are, we little band of brothers.
are completed in the village, Dr. Mitchell. Fine. Are you going to let that plane be until some of our people get down here? Until sundown. Damn it. If that plane was carrying the nerve gas, it's still deadly. Now our people are trained to handle it, yours aren't. They'll get themselves killed and muck up the evidence. That's serious. We control this area by day, Dr. Mitchell. But the People's Revolutionary Army infiltrates after dark. Now, if your people are not here before sunset, I shall have to send a team down to that airplane. We have to identify whoever is aboard it. Those are the orders. And like all military orders, stupid! Overseas operator again. Mereka telah terlambat sehari. Mereka seharusnya telah berlepas dari Hong Kong. Tapi, mengapa mereka belum tiba? Aku mau ke orang andekan perundaan. Lekas. This is Dr. Mitchell, emergency priority four. Get me Sydney, Australia, District 1 HQ, Environmental Force Authority. I want Dr. Douglas Pruitt. No, I don't know his damn number. Australia's a bloody island, doesn't it? Track him down. Charlie Mitchell on the line from Nenmala, and he's screaming. Plug him in. Doug? Doug, you there? I'm here. What's the verdict? It's nerve gas. Chemical breakdown? Don't have it yet. I was just about to go off to the lab. Doug, the uh, death zone. It's big. How big? About 10 square miles. My God. And it's 100%. Men, women, livestock, everything dead. Dixon, I'll be out on the next flight. Have any idea where the gas originated? Well, a private plane crashed in the lake right in the middle of the death zone a couple of nights back. Nobody got to it earlier because of the fighting. I'd be ready to tie this gas to the local war they're having here. Never mind the political theory. You stick to the chemical breakdown. Dixie, get ready to move. Will do. down in the Nenmala area two nights ago. Right away. I'll be in my Projection on the tidal wave front. It should reach the Fiji Islands in six hours, 25 minutes, plus or minus 5%. You're flying up? Well, I was planning on it, unless you, unless you need me here. No, I need you about a half hour, but then you're in the clear. Sid, you handled that nerve gas incident outside Hong Kong about five weeks ago. And now we got another one. I heard. But we can't establish a connection till we get the chemical analysis. The Hong Kong incident covered about uh, 100 square feet. Killed one man, right? Right, a vagrant. Uh, Bless you, Mickey. Uh, get Henshaw in. This time, it's ten square miles and God knows how many dead. Uh, Dixie and I leave in the Nenmala soonest. All booked. You land in Singapore and drive in from there. Leave in one hour, fifteen minutes. Mm. 
There is a small war going on there, Sid. And nerve gas is a weapon. In a genocidal way. And the plane crashed in the middle of the Nenmalese death zone. That, uh, uh, possibly carrying a cargo of nerve gas for the, um... What are those uh, Nenmalese guerrillas call themselves? People's Revolutionary Army. Terror, sabotage, jungle warfare. The usual mix. Hmm. So it's possible they bought a batch in Hong Kong and crashed in Nenmala. Maggie, where's the earthquake report? Uh, e Force 3 is handling it. Ah. Anything new, Mrs. Brennan? The flight was unidentified. Singapore Air Control has been trying to run it down by a process of elimination. Their best guess is that it came out of Hong Kong. <laughs> Didn't they confirm? Hong Kong has no record of flight. All right, keep pushing. I'll talk to them when I arrive. Now, who will I be dealing with in uh, Nenmala? The current government, or is there a new one? The current government, definitely. The guerrillas have been scattered there back in the jungle. Buying nerve gas. Madness. Can't be controlled, it can only kill. All right, Sid, thank you, you're clear. On my way. Give me a rundown of the current situation in Nenmala. 20 minutes. 10. I've got a plane to catch. Dr. Pruitt? Yes. Come with me, please. We were expecting to be met by Dr. Mitchell. Oh, Dr. Mitchell completed his test and has returned to the lake. Dr. Pruitt, may I present the Vice President of Nen Mala, Mr. On Nu. Nong Hei Fung Kine. You speak our language with skill, Dr. Pruitt. I was fortunate enough to be born very near here. My associate, Mr. Hart. Gentlemen, please, we can talk on our way to the lake. why my government is concerned about nerve gas. Well, you're right to be concerned. That's why we're here. See, the E-Force operates in over a hundred countries, always against the same enemy. Disease, disaster, war. And we lose more often than we win. Now, in Nenmala, we've already lost over 200 lives. Only Asians, Dr. Pruitt. Damn it, spare me the prejudice. I work as a member of the human race. You'd better be prepared to believe that. I apologize, Dr. Pruitt. You must understand, there are members of my government who fear the presence of your organization in my country. Mm, I understand those fears. We run into them very often, small emerging nations like your own and in large established countries as well. The truth of the matter is, Mr. No, you have nothing to fear from us. e has has no politics. We couldn't operate if we did. We live in a time of incredible paradoxes. Half the people in the world go to bed at night without enough to eat. The other hand, we're on a diet. Established nations are consuming power sources at such a rate the world could well run dry before the end of the century. Whereas in countries like yours, a man can live and die without ever having seen an electric light in his home or used a flush toilet or even made a telephone call. Time's changing. Of course it changes. They have to change and people like you and me have to believe that the world will be better for it. The booming technology of today is at least oh, 20 years ahead of our understanding and our ability to cope with it. Nerve gas isn't new. Of course it isn't. But isn't it an awesome thought that one man could start an epidemic that would sweep the globe? That a single polluted pond in, uh, in Norway could kill a thousand people 6,000 miles away. Now we just want to make sure the world is still around when it gets through changing.
Welcome to Nimala. Only a short while longer, Dr. Fred. We never get involved in politics. Contact you as soon as we have any answers to all. Thank you. I come from a village very much like this one. You're a lucky man. It's beautiful. Uncomplicated. Yes, it is. 
I apologize, Dr. Pruitt. Because of the ambush? No, for my prejudices. Dr. Pruitt? Yes? Dr. Mikkel is waiting for you at the lake. The jeep is waiting for you now, sir. Good. Mr. Hill? Thank you. Thank you. Heard you run into a ruckus down the road. Yeah, welcome to the Nen Malise Summer Festival. <laughs> it's a chemical breakdown on the nerve gas, Charlie. I just got it. It's the Hong Kong batch, all right, Tarbin. Uh, What's the total death count? Well, it's hard to say. The army challied over 200. Affected area stabilized? Over 10 square miles. A large piece of it, that lake. You run tests on the lake? Yes, I did. And got a surprise. There's quite a bit of life in the lake. Fish? Less than 20% of the fish life was affected. Doesn't make sense. The water should have contained the gas. A lot of the gas was released first, caused the crash. A leak in the container? Possible. No one in the plane would have known a thing. Dead in a couple of seconds. I'll find out. still be some residual gas inside. Chen, according to Henshaw, this guy is the revolution around here. Maybe it's all over. Kessler, Nazi, wanted his war criminal. We had that incident with that taboon in Hong Kong. We made up uh, dossiers on anyone and everyone connected with nerve gas, and Franz Kessler was right at the top of the list. Ex-Nazi, expert on the manufacture of nerve gas. Whereabouts? Unknown. So it is all over. The gas and the manufacturer. Not necessarily. One canister doesn't contain very much gas, might be more. Where? The hell have to tell us. One Nazi and one God knows what. With enough nerve gas to wipe out everything in a 10 mile radius. Pruitt. 
Maggie here. How are you? Did you find... No, we found it. Nerve gas, kaboom. Identical with the Hong Kong sample. Are you coming back? Then I'm going on to Hong Kong. Dix will take a later flight and run his test there. Uh, Maggie. As of now, we're on emergency alert. Nerve gas? Well, there may be more of it laying around. Send out notification, advise stockpiling atropine. Will do. Anything else? One more thing. Get that dossier on Franz Heinrich Kessler and send it to me in Hong Kong. Uh, okay, Maggie, out. This is Mr. Chi, technical commanding officer for the People's Revolutionary Army in this area. He has been warning me. About what? We will win this war. We have a new weapon. Nerve gas? Yes. Enough to reach from here to the border. Enough to win a revolution. Where is this gas? Already arranged for. Bought and paid. From Dr. Franz Kessler? Insanity. Begin. What is it? Kessler. Must have manufactured more gas. But it's not on the plane. In Hong Kong? Probably. And they're almost certainly in Hong Kong. The most crowded city in the world. Police. Wilson? Franz Kessler. He used the name Auerbach here in Hong Kong. British passport. Phony, of course. Applied for an import-export license, and we gave it to him. We helped set him up in business. Well, I only recognized him, Inspector, because of the work our office has been doing. Don't be diplomatic, Dr. Pruitt. With our error, we're working to correct it. We staked out Kessler's home and his business. Mm. Any associates? Oh, none that we know of. His wife's dead. He has one daughter. Plan to interview her later on today. Meanwhile, we're trying to trace the man who helped get him into Hong Kong ten years ago. What about the others on the plane? Wilson? Chen Xian. Revolutionary terrorist. Expert in guerrilla warfare. Very intelligent. He'd have made effective use of the nerve gas. But this other man, next. When we saw his picture, all the bells rang. Ivan Tutucci, head of his own criminal conglomerate. Narcotics, gun running, smuggling, murder. Next. Who's that? Jack Gallagher, rather smooth operator. He and Tutucci worked together from time to time. Well, if Tutucci bought an entire shipment of nerve gas from Kessler and this, uh, and Gallagher, he might know where it's stored. It's a possibility. Not very likely. This seems to be the sort of... Yes? The company's office called, sir. Good. Tell him we'll be there in 20 minutes. Yes, sir. That's all, Wilson. Wilson, this is urgent. 
All right, tell him the usual method. I shall contact Mr. Gallagher for you. Perhaps in an hour, the usual place. Compound is called cyanodimenthal lemon ethoxyphosphine oxide. Kaboom. Or call it nerve gas. How deadly is it, Dr. Pruitt? If it touches the skin, it kills within seconds. We estimate that Kessler may have manufactured as many as a dozen canisters of antidote. Atropin. A force is prepared to fly in substantial quantities. And how long would we have to administer this antidote? Two to ten minutes. But that's impossible. You mean to say that. Practically speaking, there's no defense against this monstrosity. As I understand it, sir, such a release of taboon could have a serious negative effect on a substantial portion of the civilian population. No, damn it, don't try to pretend it's a theoretical problem. It's not. We're dealing with facts. The gas is here. That's a fact. What can we do? Well, unfortunately, the only solution I have is completely impractical. Evacuate the city. Impossible. Our only chance is to locate the gas, sir. But that could take time. We don't know how much time we've got. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll begin making emergency plans. Our entire police force is at your disposal, Dr. Pruitt. And I want to be informed on a constant basis, Inspector. Yes, sir. History. Apparently, Kester was ill when he arrived here. There's a patient at St. Anne's Clinic for eight months. Mm -hmm. Nervous breakdown treated by Dr. Hans Gutner. Bit of irony there. Dr. Gutner was a refugee from a Nazi concentration camp. What would he have thought if he'd known his patient was Franz Heinrich Kessler? Had a daughter, Heather. When the girl was 18, the mother died. Suicide. Maybe she found out who her husband was. It's possible. You don't seem to have very much on the door, eh? No, she's spent a lot of her life at schools in England. Just been living with her father the last few years. Apparently, she's not very close to him. Nobody gets very close to a man like that, including himself. killed because of the crash. There was a canister of deadly gas on the plane. It leaked, escaped, killed everyone on board. Now, please, please listen to me. Your father may have had other canisters in that gas. If they explode, if the gas escapes, a great many people will die. I don't believe you. He's not dead. He's dead. And you must help us. Do you have any idea where those canisters might be hidden? Metal canisters about uh, 12 inches long. I don't know anything about my father's business. Nothing. Phone, Dr. Freud. Yes? Doug, I've got the test all set up. Fine. We'll be there inside half an hour. I'll have my men search the villa, but I don't expect much. The girl doesn't seem to know anything. 
I'm not sure. She had a sort of an odd shock reaction. Better keep an eye on her. Of course. I repaired the brake and filled the canister with an anesthetic. Almost as swift acting as Tabon. Only it doesn't kill. So you're going to depressurize the tank to the same approximate level as, uh, as when the canister was ever Yes, I believe that's one of the factors that affected it. Those canisters, if there are more, can go any time. Thanks. Kessler entered Hong Kong with a personal guarantee from his physician, Dr. Hans Guttner. He also started his business here with a loan from Dr. Hans Guttner. I'm sorry. You shocked me. With what, Dr. Guttner? The no gas of Franz Heinrich Kessler. With both. So, Franz Kessler is dead. As he lived, so he died, with the taint of murder on him. But he left behind enough nerve gas to kill this city. I promise you I don't know anything about that. Nothing. He helped him to get into Hong Kong, become a resident. He helped him start a business. Why? For the most personal of reasons. Franz Kessler was a very practical man. When the war was nearly over, nearly lost, he arranged himself a ticket to freedom, myself and my children. He helped us to escape the ovens in the camp. And in exchange, we were to help him pose as a refugee to escape his crime. And you did that? To save the lives of my wife, my daughters, and myself. Would you say no? Could you refuse? I accepted. I helped him to change his identity, tended him as a doctor. But I paid. I paid. I could not escape him. So you were involved with him? Only personally. I was the one human with whom he could be honest. He clung to me, he hated me, and he used me to make confession. Dr. Goodner, do you have any idea, uh, perhaps from these confessions, where Kessler might have hidden the nerve gas? No. He was insane. Totally insane. He talked to me, but he said nothing. And I have no idea where he hid this monstrous gas. Ivan Tutucci is dead. Killed in a plane crash with Chen, an ex-Nazi named Franz Kessler. So Ivan got careless, did he? Well, that is news. There's more. A doctor from the Environmental Force Authority is pushing everybody. Says that Kessler has hidden some gas in the city. They want it really badly. 
I gather it's valuable. That it is, sport. That it is. Inspector Bigelow is beginning to put the squeeze on. With Tutucci dead, he reckons he's going to bust you. Maybe you ought to go somewhere. That's what I'm planning to do, Wilson. As soon as I get a, enough loot together. Well, don't look to me. <laughs> no, I won't. Wilson. This environmental, uh... Let's go back here. This environmental force authority you were talking about. You mentioned a doctor. What's his name? Pruitt. That's a little more serious. <laughs> a job for you. I want you to locate the Kessler girl. That's it. Let me know as soon as you do. The apartment. Dr. Pruitt? Yes? There's a gun in my pocket, and it's pointed right at you. Move. Dr. Pruitt. That makes us both clever men. I hope so. I hope you're clever enough to help me find the taboo. That's interesting. I was hoping you'd do the same thing for me. Sit down. Nerve gas. It's kind of a funny thing for a college boy to be playing around with, isn't it? You know how dangerous it is? I know how valuable it is. You want a drink? No. I just have one myself. You know, Dr. Pruitt, I'm in the process of cracking down where that gas might be. I think it might be helpful if you tell me everything that you know about it. Well, I know one thing that you probably don't. What's that? The canisters are defective. The gas may leak out, huh? Well, that's one canister, Pruitt, one out of 12. Something you probably don't know about, and that's I got a lot of money tied up in this deal. In no way I'm gonna lose out in this little treasure hunt. Now, I like fun and games as well as the next man, but uh, the fun's over. Game's all been played. How do you get through to a man like you? Cash, Doctor. Cash always gets through to me. What we're talking about, ultimately, is uh, it's not just people in Hong Kong, but, well, how shall I say it? It's organization of life called man. That means you and me and a few billion others, and that's all there is. There ain't no more. Now, for God's sake, will you for once in your life stand up and be counted? Let's give each other a hand and solve the problem with that damn gas. You an MD? PhD. Oh, yeah, one of those. 
Well, I'm simplicity itself, Pruitt. All I think about is what's good for me. As far as I'm concerned, what's good for Jack Gallagher is good for this organization or whatever you're talking about. Now, you've got yourself involved in something that's not good for Jack Gallagher. So it's not good for you either. I want information. There's an easy way or there's a hard way. It's your choice. Just start talking. But there's no time. That's right. There's no time. Now start talking. I really don't know anything. There's nothing to tell. Let me get out of here and do You're not going talk. anywhere. Where to, Pruitt? The police? You're the front runner in this race, and I'm taking you out of it. Now, before that happens, you're going to go through a lot of pain until you feel very anxious to be helpful. I'll start at the beginning.
police? No. And I'm sure no one was following her. Good, very good. Here. Wilson? I'm leaving, but I want you to go on ahead. Where? Macau. I'll join you there later. How long do I wait? Until that runs out, or until I run out. I'm sorry, Heather. <laughs> what a charming liar you are. Quite comforts me. <laughs> I'm beginning to think you're a bit of your father's daughter. I am. And the heiress to a small fortune. That too. And you'd like to be my agent and help me dispose of it all. That's right. Can I trust you? Only if you stay close to me. I'll show you where it is. Searched this place, and I went over it. That was your mistake. You should have gone under it. There it is. Where's it go? Under the city, sewage and drainage channels. My father's habitat. You're a little kinky, aren't you? Am I? Yeah. Jack Gallagher. I thought you told me he was a smooth operator. Okay. I'd hate to meet him when he gets rough. Did you manage to get anything at all out of it? No, oh, damn it, it's just that he knows something, but what it is and how much there is to it, I have no idea. In any case, it's the only lead we've got that's got to be picked up fast. Easily said, Doctor. Hong Kong isn't a very big city, but it's a rabbit warren. Especially for a man with as many friends as Gallagher. A constant surprise, sweet girl. How far down do we go? All the way. If you want the nerve gas. And me. Do you? Love and money? What else is there? Finding that girl. Yes. Yes. Through it here. Well, that's a possibility. Where? Yeah. Hang on. What is it? Breakthrough. Remember, I have been on a trip. Today is the first day I have been in my office. When I arrived. Kessler. It was hand delivered two days ago. Right over there.
We'll get it to the lab right away. Drive carefully. I'll be right along. All right, Doctor. Why you? This was in the package with the canister. I listened to it, and I realized that Franz Kessler was mad. Those canisters are set to explode in under two hours, and the only man who knows where they were is dead. Kessler? He was terrified, not of death, but of facing the deaths he had caused, the 300,000 in the caps. So he sold it. If he was exposed and captured, he would blackmail the world with the lives of four million people in Hong Kong. Genocide compounded by genocide. This is Franz Heinrich Kessler speaking. Once Gaulat of Strasia, once honored among the Führer's advisors. But you aren't interested in past glories, only in the future. Understand this. The future is only 85 hours long. To my captors, if you have found this recording, you are following my instructions. Now listen. I've hidden somewhere in the city of Hong Kong 11 canisters of Tapoon and the time bomb. The time bomb will go off exactly 85 hours from the end of this message. And four million people die. To save their lives, I must be set free. When that has happened, Dr. Guttner will receive instructions as to where the canisters are hidden. Remember, 85 hours from now, and the world comes to an end for the people of Hong Kong. The time is now uh, five minutes past midnight, May 22nd. Mark, the city of Hong Kong has one hour and 55 minutes to live. When that has happened, Dr. Guttner will receive instructions. How do you receive instructions from a dead man? Question, why did he say Dr. Guttner will receive instructions? Why not, I will tell Dr. Guttner. I don't understand. Sir Kessler was frightened. He didn't want to risk calling you or coming to you. So somebody else was to get those instructions to you. Somebody else knows where the tavern is. No, Kistler had no friends. He trusted no one. He has a daughter. Heather? No, she would be a terrible risk. She is a deeply disturbed girl. Franz Hessler created of his daughter a kind of twisted image of himself. How? Oh. She loved her father, but wrongly. I said disturbed, a euphemism. She is homicidal. She murdered her mother. And friends helped her to conceal it, to make it look like suicide. It was a bond between them. Murder.
very beautifully, Heather. Thank you. What are you doing here? We have to talk. I, I have no time to talk to you now. You, uh, you'll have to go now. I'm expecting company, and I have no time for you. Oh, I'll go, but uh, first you'll have to tell me where the canisters are hidden. See, I heard the tape. Your father told me about the uh, 85 hours. They're almost up. It's time to tell me. Now. Oh, no. That's between my father, myself, and God. And the millions will die. They're not real. They're evil. My mother was evil. Did you know that? She was evil all of her life, and I... I had to be everything to my father because she was nothing. She was evil. She loved me. 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 Heather, as you loved your father, tell me where the canisters are. What makes you think that I know where they are? I spoke with Dr. Gutner. Gutner? Gutner the liar. Did he tell you about how he got down on his hands and knees and begged my father to spare his life? Did he tell you that? No, he told me about you. Lovely. Troubled. I want to help. Let me take the canisters. That way you won't have to worry about them anymore. What did Goodner say to you about my father? He told me how much you loved your father. And how he loved you. Oh, yes. He always loved me. Now you want to join him. Oh. Oh, yes. I'm beautiful for him. I'll be ready when he comes. But he can't come because he's dead. He wouldn't have wanted you to die. See, the plane crash was an accident. Your father wanted to live, to love you, to protect you. And that's why I need the canisters. To carry out his wishes. No. Yes. Yes, and he's dead. But his dream, we've got to see that that's carried out. That you live. You'll be dead, too. Very soon. Like your father. Like the other one. He's dead, too. Uh, under the warehouse? In the sewer? He'll be there when the gas comes out.
be trapped? I don't think so. your project, Mrs. Brennan. Something to do in a small hour. I fed in all the factors on your Hong Kong problem, plus the most conservative psychological appraisal of Kessler and his daughter. Uh, and? Well, the computers were quite positive. You were facing an 86.3 chance of failure. Hmm. Well, that confirms an old policy of mine. Never send a computer on a man's job. Oh, to put it another way, congratulations for beating the odds. going around cheering except you. Four million lives on the edge because of one maniac and a little technology. The human animal frightens me. Yeah, I feel the same way too sometimes. But every now and then I get a shot of hope. Good morning, Mrs. Christopher. Good morning, Dr. Can Cruz. the world possibly be as uncomplicated as it seems right now? Remember the last time you said that, Doctor? Mm. Mrs. Christopher, it seems oddly quiet around here today. Could I interest you in a day in the country? Quiet lunch, lazy afternoon, early dinner. Interest? Doctor, you fascinate me. Mm -hmm. Dixie, no. I knew you'd say that, so I sent Sid round personally. Sid is in the Fiji Islands. Doug, listen, I spotted a number of... I hope you come down with ringworm. Doug, I spotted a number of cases of amoebic. In Fiji. Could be epidemic in the islands. Tai Chan, can you come right in? I'll get a medical background. Sid, are there any places left for a quiet lunch, lazy afternoon, early dinner? I don't know. We're getting down to the bottom of the barrel. That's what we're here for. Join us this morning for news, current affairs and special guests around Australia on Nine when we bring you today. It's the best way to start any day. And it's right here on Nine at breakfast time.